Welcome back. In the first video of the module, we got started with Azure App Services. We saw what's the difference between how you deploy your conventional application onto your uh, infrastructure and how you could leverage Azure App Services and its managed services where you don't care about the underlying infrastructure, virtual machines, scaling, backups, configuration, everything is taken care by Azure itself and what we take care of as a developer is just uh, developing cool features for our customers and deploying those applications uh, be it .NET, Java, Ruby, Python, any language of your choice, any database of your choice and uh, within a few seconds you could just go ahead and deploy your application in this video it's going to be a demo wherein we got started with we're going to get started with azure app services we're going to see how you could create your app services manually using the gui in the next video we're going to learn how you could automate all of the processes which we're going to do so without further ado let's get started so i'm on my azure portal um, got a free trial version uh, in case you haven't got up uh, make sure you enroll yourself into Azure uh, subscription. A free Azure gives you a free subscription of $200, which is more than enough to get started with your Azure journey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the app services. If you don't see on your dashboard, you could just type in Azure app services and that's going to give you the app service. It's going to be a brand new app services run in front of you. So you click on create the app service and then it's going to prompt you to create a resource group. I don't have a resource group at the moment, so I'm going to create a resource group that's going to be code red RG. And then you select the name of your app services that's going to be code red um, demo, probably. And that's going to look up that whether it's uh, the name is available or not that's going to be this has to be a unique name, uh, just like a storage account. So uh, since it would have a DNS name until unless you create your own one. So make sure that this is unique and then you select whether you want to deploy it as a code or a Docker container. Uh, if you get to select Docker container, you, you get a chance to select the Linux or Windows OS and then you've got your code and then you select what type of application you want to deploy, whether it's .NET, ASP.NET, .NET Core, uh, Java, whichever version you want, Tomcat or and then Node.js, PHP, Python, Ruby, whatever application you want to deploy. So I'm going to select uh, .NET 3.1. Uh, obviously, since it's a Linux, uh, Windows based, uh, more compatible with Windows. So I'm going to select the Windows as the operating system. I'm going to select the region. Uh, it doesn't matter to me much. So I'm going to select the central US and then uh, the windows plan it selects the name and then if you click on the change size you get to select the plan the plan gonna be remember we talked about multiple plans that uh, dev standard isolated uh, production that's what this plan gives you if you click on the dev one it gives you very limited amount of features uh, start off with one gb of memory and then uh, 60 minutes of compute time which is pretty less which is good probably if you're doing a poc or some testing kind of stuff and goes up to 1.7 gig of memory and then you've got your production workload wherein you get features like ssl domain and all those features which are missing in the uh, dev or test uh, slot you get auto scaling daily backups traffic manager storage of highly available and uh, standard storage and then you got your isolated where none of uh, the infrastructure which is given to you is not shared with anybody else any other customer so it's dedicated for you and that's why it is called as isolated i'm going to select a, a pretty standard uh, machine i'm going to hit apply and then click on the next tab which is monitoring application insight is uh, uh, one of the monitoring inbuilt tool from azure which you can bind with your application uh, so that you can kind of uh, make sure that your application is continue continuously sending logs to application insights and application insights is giving you a holistic overview of about your application how many errors you've been receiving who are the unique users and all those sort of so i'm going to select yes i would highly recommend you use application insights i've used it for multiple projects for my customers and i've uh, find it highly efficient when it comes to monitoring and alerting tags if you want to give any tags let's suppose you just want to give his owner as me and then the type of apps gonna be uh, dotnet and that's pretty much all i am going to hit on 
review plus create and I'm gonna hit on create and within few seconds it's gonna start creating the research group then it uh, so you would notice that it would have as soon as it uh, creates uh, the app service it's gonna have one app service and uh, one app services plan let's give it a few seconds so that it starts to create the resources one by one and you would see that the component are slowly being created if I go to the resource group as your resource group I sh should see the code red RG if I click on it we would see that we have an application insights and then underneath it we would now have uh, rest of the other resources as well so app services is also created if I go to my code RG resource group again we would see that it has already got the app services plan now it's time to create the app services and if you hit on the resource group again we would see that now we have three resources one is application insights for monitoring one is app services and another is plan what's the difference app services is the underlying infrastructure your actual infrastructure where you deploy your application be it .NET, Java, Ruby, Python and app services is the plan which which uh, denotes that what is the plan of your app services whether it's standard, free, basic, isolated, dedicated and all those sort of information. If I click on the app services it's gonna take me to the uh, dashboard of app services wherein it's gonna show me that okay if you wanna browse to this app service that's the by default app services which is running uh, if you don't have a domain name you could just give it this to your customer and start using it however it would always be like your app name and then followed by the Azure website uh, .NET and that's your application demo application you could always stop your application and now if you just hit on the URL your application won't be reachable um, yeah app services now stopped if I hit again after a few seconds it should be unavailable as you can see on the screen now if I again started it should uh, start catering to the request and application should be up uh, you get some sort of uh, graphs like the 500 errors or the 500 requests how many data in or data out request average response time if it's higher you could set up alerts as well on all those sort of things so that's that's kind of the holistic view of your app services it's running uh, with the resource group and with the plan and uh, uh, the URL of your application until you get your uh, domain name sorted and then you've got your tags I'm gonna touch base only on the important ones uh, rest of them can be kind of self-explanatory on the tags you see that we've got two tags we created and then if you go to the deployment slots under the deployment at the moment we would have only one deployment slot which we created was code root demo uh, however you could create multiple deployment slots uh, so if you click on another add a slot and just give it a name as staging and you could probably clone the settings your app config web config everything all the settings can be cloned from your previous app which is already deployed and it's gonna validate and if you hit on add it's gonna add one more slot for you so what does these uh, deployment slot means uh, let's suppose you've got a single app services uh, let's suppose it's a e-commerce platform for XYZ company and you want to have multiple environments so rather than creating multiple app services what you could just do it you could just clone your application and have multiple stages like one staging and then production uh, and uh, dev sandbox regression and you could create multiple application and you can you could see that the traffic percentage is zero at the moment you could always edit it and distribute your traffic to these one and when you see that uh, whenever the users are uh, getting the are able to hit this uh, staging application and you're happy with all those features you could just swap your uh, staging with the production uh, you could simply click on swap 
and then you would be able to swap your application from production to staging so this is highly beneficial when you have when you want to test the new features and you want to only dedicate or roll out it for a few set of users and then once you're happy without any downtime you could just uh, uh, swap your application within few seconds so that's the benefits of uh, the deployment slots and then you've got center as well deployment center is a new feature wherein you could just uh, enable continuous integration and deployment uh, whether you have uh, whether your code is sitting onto azure repo or github or bitbucket local uh, get anything everything could be uh, set up using these uh, ci cd pipeline you don't need to take care of deploying your application uh, Azure CI CD deployment center could take care of it what you could do, do it you could go to Azure repos uh, if it's uh, sitting on github or bitbucket you need to authorize it I've already got the Azure repo authorized uh, and then you've got two services uh, build service and the build pipeline so whether you can either choose from Azure pipeline or you could use the app services uh, could do build service which is which is going to be engine of your application which uh, which builds your code and deploys to the app center and then once your uh, deployment center is integrated with azure devops you could just select the project and once your azure repos are And once your Azure repo is integrated, you could just list down all the projects and then you've got your repo, then the branch, and then you can hit on continue. And if you click on finish, you should have uh, your CI CD setup. So whenever now you check in, commit any code onto that particular repo, which we selected, uh, it's gonna deploy the code changes automatically to your Azure web apps and this is how easy it is to set up CI CD then you've got configuration um, configuration selects uh, the app configs or web consider these as app or web configs of your application uh, where you could just have connection string and you could just hide them and uh, store them as a key value pair uh, rather than uh, copying into your application as a plain text uh, then you've got your authorization. We've got it off at the moment. However, you could always integrate uh, Azure Active Directory and leverage the power of uh, Azure Active Directory, which has been running for many decades, and then just use the power of those authentication and identity service. Then, most important feature, one of the most important features, which I really like, backups. Uh, if you are working on an enterprise application, there are high chances you need to take snapshots for your OS or backup of your uh, uh, code or database so Azure Web Apps gives you that feature by default and you don't need to write any scripts or anything you could create as many backups in a day you want and your application is highly available if something goes wrong so you don't need to take care of creating any scripts or anything uh, backups gonna take care of your application backup pretty easily custom domain uh, the domain which we used over here was an Azure domain. What what does that mean? Uh, the first, it has got your application name, which is code red demo, and then dot website Azure websites and dot net. Instead of that, you want to create something as code red dot com or demo dot com or uh, whatever company name you have. You don't want Azure websites dot net, obviously. Uh, so you could use those domain. Now, if you have one from GoDaddy or Big Rock or whatever domain name providers you have, you could just integrate your app with that particular domain if you don't have a new one you could just buy domain from here and uh, yeah that's that's easy how it is to create map your domain name with your application then you've got your TLS and SSL settings you've got your networking setup and app scale up which means you can add more capacity to your infrastructure or scale out which means you could add uh, just more number of machines to your uh, web apps and that's going to take care of all the scaling part basis on the capacity so it's going to scale on certain metrics uh, and those metrics could be anything uh, could be your cpu utilization or could be uh, could be could be your uh, memory usage or all those sort of rules you could just add a rule over here and basis on the average of those metrics cpu data uh, TCP closeouts or basis on these metrics your application would scale out 
and then you've got your web jobs which obviously include shell powershell if you want to run certain jobs in the background or nightly or weekly you can use the web jobs and then you've got the app services plans and uh, kudas we talked about the plan that this is the one which uh, tells you that this is the plan you're running and then you've got your console console kind of gives you a a CLI of your application if I hit LS all my code is gonna be showed up you see that these are my code directory if I caught uh, cat any of my file it's gonna give me the uh, content of my file and this is how you could just uh, troubleshoot or do an LS or directory or uh, do check logs or do whatever you want to do that's the console and then you've got your advanced tools as well uh, and uh, underneath the monitoring you've got your alertings uh, metrics application logs and a lot of those cool features which we want to touch base on a different topic all right that was about it that's that's too much of features i know for the first demo but i wanted to make sure that we uh, everybody of us so whosoever is watching the video uh, gets aware about the uh, features and whenever we talk about certain features in the future upcoming videos which we would uh, you guys can just relate with this introductory session and kind of connect the dots uh, then and there all right that's pretty much all in the next video we're going to get started with how you could create uh, your app services using uh, the automation and uh, yeah that's about it i hope this was informative i'll see you in a while thank you